Hello and welcome to the preview show. We've got plenty to talk about this week. Um, and the, I suppose the best place to start would be the Sheffield United game. But before we get into that, I'd just like to welcome Darren Williams, former Sunderland player of the show. How are you doing, Darren? Thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Yeah. And BBC's Nick Bond is a knock my iPad up there off the table. <laughs> oh, you, that's you Nick. sort of thing I do. That's, that, 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 that was a late night. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're you <laughs> bouncing. Yeah, plenty of diversions <laughs> last night. For yeah, there were. <laughs> um, we'll start though, I suppose the best place to start is Max Power's goal, which was a, an absolute screamer. Darren, what did you make of that? Yeah, it was a fantastic goal. I mean, I used to score them in training all the time. Like, but <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, a fantastic finish. Um, probably from a guy who, as well as probably been a little bit under par, I think, this season. Um, you know, and hopefully that'll kickstart his season and, and give him an opportunity to start as well. Um, you know, he's not had, he's not had the, you know, the best of starts to the season and I'm hoping obviously this will, you know, kick him on and, and you know, we'll see a lot more of him because he can change games and make a, you know, make a difference. And Nick, I know when the corner was taken, I was sitting there thinking they've overhit this goes to Lugo 9 and then obviously get feeds Max Power and Power said afterwards that was actually a routine that they've worked from the other side of the pitch so he wasn't expecting it to come but were you thinking what's happening here? Well, I was a bit there? thrown when the corner was taken because I was expecting one to go lobbed straight into the penalty area so for, for a minute you're trying to adjust to the fact that he's taken short and then the, the cross into midfield and thinking oh is this one of those that's just going to go horribly wrong it's going to peter yeah. out in the middle but credit to, to Max I mean just latched onto that and hit it absolutely perfectly. And, I, and, you, and you know Max can do that. I mean, I've just been chatting to someone actually coming in here. Why don't Sunderland do it more often? Why don't they take more shots from outside the box like mm, that? Yeah. Because when you've got players like Max Power, you know can strike a ball, Maguire can strike a ball. Um, there are players in there that, that can do that. It, 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 you know, even if it doesn't hit the target, or produce, you know, it can cause confusion in the penalty area if it comes back off the keeper into the box. So, you know, it's another option which I think they should perhaps sometimes you, be brave enough to use a little bit more. But um, echoing what Darren said about Max, you know, back when they played Accrington Stanley in the first round of the, the competition, Max had a really good game that night. And I thought, oh, this is it. This is Max's chance to mm, push on yeah. to the team now. And it just hasn't happened. So it'd be frustrating for Max because I know he'll be desperate to play and he'll be wanting to get more game time. But after a performance like last night, Again, it's you know he's asking questions. He's putting the manager under pressure in terms of who he's going to pick for the games at the weekend. Um, and there is a question mark for Jack Ross because of what happened after the the last game in the competition at Burnley. You know the reaction to that game. So there's a lot for for Jack Ross to have to consider in the light of what was a very very good performance. Yeah, I think from Max's point of view, I think he's put himself in the window now a little bit. Um, and obviously, you know, the man, I'm sure the managers noticed his performance last night and hopefully, you know, like I say, he will get the opportunity because he can change games and he can make a big difference. Defensively, very strong last night and there was two debutants in there as well. But Darren, I wanted to ask you about debuts. How difficult is a debut to, you know, to get a good performance? Were you always good in your debut or did you often struggle? Um, I came, no, I mean, I came on a Arsenal away uh, for Steve Agnew, um, which is, you know, a very daunting place to come on at. Um, I and mean, you know we were fortunate enough to, to draw that game, and then we you know we brought Arsenal back, um, and, and we beat them, which was was fantastic. And and you know getting involved in that, it, it's great. It, it's a massive step. I mean you know the guys have gone in last night, you know up against, you know a, a good Sheffield United side, you know a good club, um, you know it's a tough place to go. Um, as Bramall Lane and you know the guys have stood well and stood firm and you know keeping a clean sheet is massive um, and I think for you know for any defender you know that that's that's better than a goal for a defender really if you keep a clean sheet and obviously you know the same for for a goalkeeper. And Joel Lynch last night Nick was just a colossal wasn't he? I thought exactly he was fantastic he and I spoke to Joel afterwards and I, I got a lot of time for him because he, he he was saying again and we were spoken to him when he first arrived saying again last night how in the summer he was virtually thinking about giving football up. You know, he got so low. He'd, he'd been at Sheffield United on trial, the training there. Uh, he got a hamstring injury. Um, then thought he was going to get a deal at Reading, and it didn't mm. transpire. He comes back to Sheffield United to train. Chris Wilder signed someone else, and he was as low as he could get, thinking you know this yeah. football career was over. So you know, to get this lifeline now at Sunderland, and, and he, he loved it last night, and you you could tell. I mean. He looks, I said to him, you look like a no-nonsense centre-half, you yeah. know, one of those old-fashioned, you just just send the ball out, it just command your, your, your space, and I thought he did that so well last night, and I actually, you know, and Dubok as well, 
commendably, you know, he came in and, and looked absolutely solid, read the game, got himself in the right positions. Um, the pair of them last night, I thought they, they were excellent and you know, looks like two good signings. Do you think Mousset's still in uh, Joel Lynch's pocket from last night? Because Joel Lynch just marshaled him out the game. <laughs> well, really he was so funny because when we arrived at the ground, one of the Sheffield United fans outside collecting autographs pointed out the uh, orange Lamborghini in the car park, which stood out a country mile yeah. compared to all the other cars. Well, who is that with that Lise Mousset? And it turns out, having conversations in the press room beforehand, a little bit of a character. Um, putting it mildly, you know, um, but Chris Wilder apparently, for all the, the journeyman, really solid players he's got, the Chris Bashams of this world in, in that team, he likes a maverick yeah. in, in the squad, and Moussa appears to be that player. Um, and all credit to Sunderland last night for keeping him quiet. I mean, you can see he's lively, mm. you can see he's got pace, and you can see he's a threat. I thought they handled him really well. I think the guy, I mean, obviously Lynch will have had a point to prove as well, or he'll have wanted to prove a point personally himself as well. Um, you know, and it's difficult when you're in the, like you say, you know, when you're going through them things, you know, you get knocked back by your club, you know, you get injuries, you know, it does get you down, you know, but fair play to him, he's come back, he's come back stronger. You know, he's made, he, he stamped his authority on that game last night, you know, and he's put himself again, you know, like Max Power has, you know, in, in the window, um, you know, and hopefully, you know, he'll continue those performances for us. Interesting, he did say that he's lacking match fitness. So it's just one of those, you think, oh great, he looks really good. Wouldn't it be, you know, you could, you, you, you're looking at partnerships, what, Oz Turk and Willis, Lynch and Willis, you know, there's, there's an mm. option there. Will he go straight in at, against MK Dons? By his own admission, probably not. Probably not, yeah. Um, and then you think, well, when's he going to get, when's the opportunity yeah. to arrive? It will, inevitably, because players pick up injuries yeah, we've seen, course. you know, that the, you know, Willis are knocked last weekend and so on, so you'll get his chance, but they, they, they do look like they've got a good, solid League One championship centre-half, which is perhaps what they've been needing, you know, yeah, that, and that clean, no, you know, correlation yeah. last night, clean sheet, Debock, Lynch, yeah. Flanagan, it, 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 it's, maybe that's part of the the, the sort of the pattern now to try and get someone like him in the yeah, team. I think you've got to be no nonsense, you know, in, in League One, and you know that's the way it's got to be. You know, you defend, you're a defender, you know, and you do your job first and foremost. You know, once once you you're starting to command the game, and so you, you get on top of the game, then you can maybe go and play a little bit. But you know, do do the the basics right early, and then you know, look what happened last night, clean sheet. And talking about the clean sheet, Lee Burge came in last night, and I thought he played spectacularly. He was command his area well, but the one thing I noticed was his kicking was phenomenal. He's got he was a able to kick, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, clear it all the way to the opposition night. box, and that, mm. that's a weapon that you know we we haven't really utilised much. But do you think if you were playing Charlie White with Burge in there, that could be something we'd use more often, a bit more. Route you one. could. I mean, I'd, I'm loath to suggest you go route one because it's <laughs> it does tend. It's to not really it. route one though, is it? It's a, it's a tactic to use. Yeah, just I, to I, get I, I, he did actually pick out Simon Wall with one kick. I mean, that was you know, that's the strength of his kicking. But you're right, he's got a, he has got a big kick. But he's, I mean, that opening 10 minutes of the game, seven or eight minutes of the game before Matt scored, he was fantastic. I mean, that was a point at which Sheffield United mm. could have killed that game. They could have gone one up and, and they'd have been full of confidence and running, you know, not to say that some of them might not come back like they did at Burnley. But the way that Sheffield United started, the yeah. acceleration, the speed, the movement, you feared then. So Burge, all credit to him for the reaction he had so early in the game. And then to react to Tom Flanagan's back pass and, you know, and smartly deal with that. Um, and we've had so many conversations in the past about if you've got a confident keeper, it breeds confidence in yeah, the players totally. in front of him. And we saw that in the championship season. The keepers had no confidence, and the whole team then, it's not a domino effect right through the team. Mm. That they're just, it's so brittle and fragile, the confidence through the, the rest of the team. I think, like you say, it can be a weapon. You know, it can be something that we have in... You know, we not use it all the time. I, you know, I get that, but you know, if if he can command his area, you know, and, and take it, take one high, and, and then obviously distribute, you know, with great distribution down the field and pick out a centre forward early, you know, you may catch a few teams off guard. And do you think the competition now? We've got two keepers there that I think everyone can be confident in that they're going to do a good job. Does that really help a defence? You know, I remember when, when you were here, we had Thomas Sorensen and Jürgen Macho. Does that really help knowing that you've got two keepers there that are going to be strong? I think so, yeah. I think if, you know, you know like we touched on there, you know, I think if you're, you're confident in the defender, in your keeper, you know, you're, you're happy to let, you know, leave, it, leave him space, leave him an area to come and command, you know, and, and you know, you, I think it gives you more 
option then to go get tighter with a forward or get tighter with a you know a man in the box because you, you know you're that confident anything in behind you you know your keeper is going to come and claim. Oxford in the next round away is that a good draw for Sunderland? I mean we prefer something at home obviously, but is it good or would you rather have played another Premier League team and go in there as an adult? Two ways. Can't you? I think it's part of you. Let's. I mean I've said all along we're not going to win this. Um, so it's, it's, it's <laughs> semi-finals. <laughs> yeah. So for me it's a, it's been a chance to uh, enjoy going to Premier League clubs and getting Premier League clubs in the draw and, and a reward for the players, a reward for the fans. Um, I, I'm, I'm in two minds about it. It's, a, it's an opportunity to progress, mm. clearly, but at the same time, a bit of a flat draw, isn't it? Away, Oxford, it's a long way for the fans to go midweek. Um, just the clocks are changing and the, the nights are getting drawing yeah. in and you've got a lot of fixtures coming in, in October, November. I, part of me, I would rather have been drawn away at Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, just because that's what we're in the competition for. That's the reward in this competition. But it, it is an opportunity, and maybe we'll get them in the last eight. Do you think our boys will be thinking, well, you beat Oxford, you get in the quarterfinal, or anything can happen from that point? Or anything can happen. You know, it's good football, isn't it? You know, let's be honest. I think it doesn't matter who you draw within it. You know, there's always an opportunity and a chance that you can go through, and you know. Like we've touched on there, I, I think it's not probably not the best of draws that we would, probably would have wanted. You know, for the fans, it would have been fantastic to go to Chelsea or, or Man United or somewhere. Um, you know, no disrespect to Oxford, unfortunately, it's Oxford. You know, it's, it's getting to this weird time of the year where it's, you know, it's not not nice nights, it's not great, but that's what cup football is all about. You know, in the rain, you know, wind, you know, on a horrible night, you know, who knows, you can end up in the final. And it's interesting as well, I mean, I'm saying last night, you know, the three games they've played in the competition so far have all been away. You know, there's a, there's, they're, they're sort of charting quite a little cup run here. You know, away at Accrington Stanley, away at Burnley, away at Sheffield United, away at Oxford now. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's building its own momentum. And, and, you know, the irony is, after all the talk last season, you know, that the cups derailed the league form and they don't want to be involved in cups this year. Suddenly, here they are on a yeah. You know, really good cup run, um, and you've still got the, you know, the, the EFL Trophy to come, the FA Cup to come at the beginning of November. So they leap from the League Cup straight into the FA Cup. It's, uh, it's, it Don't is what it is, but I think, you know, at the moment, embrace it. It's all positive momentum, isn't well, it? Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, you know, Oxford away, midweek, horrible night. We're going to still take a hell of a lot of fans out. Well, look at look, exactly. I mean, it's like Bristol Rovers in the semi-final of the yeah. Checker Trade Trophy last season. You know, horrible weather, wretched night, long journey to go. And I, admittedly, it was a semi-final, but the fans turned out, and you know, it was a really good night. I mm. mean, you know, that game against Oxford potentially is it, it's the same because the prize after that quarter-finals of the League Cup. I yeah. mean, that's fantastic. Bolton at the weekend, I want to touch on that. I think it's fair to say Bolton played really well. Um, I think Sunderland, unfortunately, probably not a win, hit the woodwork twice, were rescued by an Aidan McGeady penalty later on. But what are the main takeaways from that 1 1 draw? I think, you know, I think we're looking at, you know, on a negative point, really. I think, you know, Bolton are going to hit the ground running at some point. You know, they're going to hit a bit of form, you know, which I think they're starting to do that. And, you know, the, the, the team, you know, the squad is starting to gel together. They've been through a tough time. You know, and these guys are fighting really. You know, to to obviously make up the loss. You know, the ground that's already lost for them. Um, so it was always going to be a tough game. Um, you know, we yeah we disappointed. You know, not to come away with you know with three points because, you know, we look. I think we're looking at it in the wrong sense. You know, we're looking at a bolt in the bottom of the league. You know, there's so many points adrift. You know, they've gone through all this turmoil. But clubs can turn it around. You know, I'm not saying Bolton are going to survive and they're going to stay in the league, but they're going to start and gel together. They're going to start and fight for their lives. And it's, they're, they're always difficult games to go to. You know, I think we, we look at it, I think, you know, we've looked at it over years, you know, even, even in my time playing, and we think, yeah, we should beat them. You know, you, you haven't got the, you know, the, you can't say that about teams. You know, you can't say we're going to go and beat them because you just don't know what's going to happen on the day. But Bolton played well. Um, you know, we, again, you know, we've come back and we've fought back into the game. Um, you know, which shows a lot of character in the in the side. I agree. I mean, I agree. I think, you know, I think too many people are still getting caught up in the fact that they think this team is is, is better and bigger and more experienced than every other team in League One. They're not. They are the, the moment Sunderland are a League One team commensurate with 
the majority of the teams in League One, give or take one or two, um, on their day, everyone's good enough to beat every other team mm. in that division. Yeah. And you look at Bolton, everyone's looked at Bolton and just assumed because they had a, a bad start and that was predominantly away from home bar one game against Ipswich at home when Ipswich, we've seen at the top of the table, uh, put five past them at home, but they drew 0-0 with Coventry, playing a, a team yeah. of youth. Who Coventry at the top, they played Oxford the, the match before. Um, oh, so so just be and Oxford just beat well. Lincoln yes. Sixness. So where, you know, so it, it, it's not a given that you're going to turn up to these teams and put five goals past them. Bolton also have got a new manager in Keith Hill, who's long yeah. time experienced manager at this level, knows what it's all about. He's from Bolton, he's proud, he's instilled that in his team. You mm. can see the way they reacted to Sunderland yeah. that, you know, he, he clearly, you know, he didn't have to do much of a team talk, I'm sure, because, you know, he, he's instilled a lot of pride in those players and, and they showed that in the way they performed. Any team that gets any sort of consistency in this division will do okay, will do well. And out, you know, everyone's been saying about Sunderland, they're underperforming, they're doing worse than last season, they're going to end up mid-table. Well, I don't see any evidence of that at all. They're still in the playoffs, they're three points off second place. Yeah. I don't think they're going to get worse, they're only going to get better. Performance last night illustrates, you know, the potential of the team, but the, the game against Sheffield United is a, is a far cry from a game against yeah. MK Dons, Bolton Wanderers, Lincoln City, because League One is a long way away from playing teams in the Premier League. Um, I mean, Darren and I were talking before about Sheffield United and how it's changed over the last decade. You know, it used to be a horrible place to go, it wasn't a very friendly club, and yet when we were there last night, it, they, they couldn't have been more helpful behind the scenes, mm. the yeah. air around the stadium is different. The, and, and that has come through them, Sheffield Knight having had three, four years in League One, rebuilding, yeah. restructuring, discovering where they're coming from again, discovering who they are. And Sunderland are going through that process now. And it was hard for Sheffield United fans to take. I mean, they hated it. They gave everybody a hard time, the players, the managers and everybody at Sheffield a hard time, which is exactly what's happening at Sunderland now. Um, you, you know, I think, to Jack Ross's credit, he's, he, he's, you know, he's, he's got broad shoulders, he's, he's taken that pressure on board. And yes, at times there have been signs that the pressure's perhaps eating away at him, but he's never really let rip like we've seen some managers can, I mean, mm. take Mick McCarthy at Ipswich when times yeah. were going bad. Mick came out and, you know, then there was a schism between the fans and him. Yeah. But Jack's never allowed that to happen. And he could have done, he could easily have been sucked into reacting in a negative way to the supporters. Mm. But he's done it on the pitch. His reaction was that performance against Sheffield United. And McGeady got a late penalty and that must have took a lot of bottle from him missing one on the previous Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, again, you know, hats off to him. You know, it's a, it's a pressure penalty, you know, regardless of how you look at it. Um, you know, everyone. You know, everyone might look at it and say, yeah, but it's a penalty." You know, against Bolton, and you know, in League One, it doesn't matter what level it's at. And you know, what at that time of the game, you know, you known for a fact that the fans will be a little bit disgruntled. We're one 0 down. You know, there's a lot. There is a lot of pressure riding on that. But you know, that that guy is incredible. You know, and you know, I'll sing his praises all day long. I think you know, he's a special player, um, and he, you know, he makes a massive difference to the side. Um, you know, we, we see that when he's not in, you know, his creativity, you know, things he sees, you know, his energy about the pitch um, is massive and is key to us, um, you know, and, you know, hopefully we can keep him, you know, injury free for the vast, vast majority of the season. Which I fear at the moment, there's an, it might well be out for a few weeks. Yeah, I know, like yeah, it's, it's, it's... Bolton, which would be interesting to see how the team copes without McGeady, because yeah. I think there's an issue with him, with McGeady within the, the team, and we've had we, we, we've talked about this with Jack Ross, and um, you know, in games, the McGeady factor, he's clearly a cut above everybody else yeah. in this division, and he's a you know, it's genuine gold dust. But sometimes I think, does he when McGeady plays well, the team plays well, yeah, when McGeady's not playing so well, the team seems to almost feed off that. If they can find a way of playing well when McGeady's sort of when you know, trying to get him. To 
into yeah. the game playing well, then mm. I think the, the, the results have been yeah. much more yeah. positive. I don't think we can solely rely on him. As, you know, I think that's wrong for you know to for, you know for, you know I've said there you know we need him inside. Yes, we do. Um, but you know, we like you say, we've got to find different ways as well. You know, if we haven't got him, you know, we we need different ways. You know, Max Power for me again. You know, he, he's a great guy to have in the, you know in the starting lineup. And, but we've got to look at different avenues and, and different aspects because if we do lose him, you know, we can't just be because you'll feel the mood drop. You know, and I think you know you'll feel it from the from the crowd. You'll feel it from the players, and we don't need that. You know, we need to be on a bit of a, a snowball, a bit of a roll. You know, and, and keep this momentum going. MK Dons at the weekend, first time we've met them in the league, or this iteration of MK Dons. Yeah. We're going to get in that politics though. <laughs> what do you think we can expect from them? They're 15th in the league, they've had a reasonably decent start for a newly promoted side, played Liverpool last night and did okay by all accounts, lost 2 0. What do you think we could expect though from them coming this season? Um, I know Paul Tisdale as, I mean, as a manager at Exeter for 12 years and he did a fantastic job there, there's no question. I mean, what he achieved at Exeter. Is, is is remarkable for the resources that, that Extra have got. Um, I thought he would be doing better this season at MK Dons, but I, I, in, in all honesty, I don't know what the situation is at MK Dons financially and, and mm. what money he's had available, what players he's been able to bring in. Um, you know, he, he, he took MK Dons up last season, did a good job there. Then I get the impression that probably he hasn't got the resources that perhaps we assume he, he has mm. at MK Dons. Yeah. So he's probably doing, you know, a good job on, you know, that's the case in so many managers in this league. I mean, look at Gareth Ainsworth at Wickham, what he's achieved at Wickham yeah. Wanderers with barely any money and barely any resources is, is remarkable. So I think Paul Tisdale is probably in, in that sort of echelon at the moment of, of, of managers mm. and teams yeah. in, in League One. But that's not to say he will not come to the Stadium of Light. Um, he's tactically very canny, and I think you know he will set that team up. And if I was Paul Tisdale, you, you know my immediate thoughts, because he's, he's you know he's, he's he's quite a deep thinker when it comes to the game as well. He'd have looked at that game at Sheffield United. He'd have looked at the game against Burnley and the reaction following the Burnley game in the League Cup. He will look to try and frustrate Sunderland for 20 minutes and get the crowd turning. Um, so uh, you know I expect it to be a difficult, tricky. Afternoon. I think you know Sunderland are going to really have to work hard. I mean, from Sunderland's point of view, the ideal thing for them would be another an, another Rotherham start, get on the board early and get MK yeah. Dons on the back foot. Because if they allow MK Dons any any into the game early on, they're going to find it's going to yeah. be a long afternoon. I think. I think we'll find out a lot this season. I think teams will come in and try and frustrate us because they know you know the expectations you know from the fans. You know, they know the stature of the club or, you know, where the stature of the club could go to. Um, you know, so that's, that'll be a lot of managers' ideas, you know, going frustrating for the first 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, one thing I will say about Port Isdale, I mean, I'm probably fine, I'm going to be proved horribly wrong here now, <laughs> but he's not one of those managers that will say to his players, um, go down and gamesmanship. That it's just not in his in his actually in his Bible. He doesn't, no. he's one that wants to play football. I mean, I remember he was, when they were at Huddersfield Extra and they had to, to basically win to stay up in League One then. Um, with 10 minutes to go, they're 1-0 up. And he insisted that he throws the ball back to the opposition that throws. Mm. He said, believe in who you are, play football. You, you, you're better than, than having to mm. go down and play those sort of Wickham antics. Yeah. So one thing MK Dons will probably do is allow Sunderland to play. It'll be an open game and there won't be any of that sort of nonsense in, in terms of time wasting. And that might actually be a benefit to Sunderland mm. at home. And looking at the team, he's, the manager's got a difficult decision there, hasn't he? Because he's got all them players that played well midweek who came in. We mentioned Joel Lynch, maybe not being mm. match fit. Lawrence de Bock, probably similar as well. What do you think the manager does? Does he keep it similar to the Bolton team, or does he make quite a few changes from the performance last weekend? It's a tough one, isn't it? It, 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 it is tough. It's funny because this morning I was listening to um, Eddie Jones talking about England rugby and their four day turnaround. Mm before playing America, after playing Tonga. And he said, we've experimented with this. We, we had a four day turnaround in the sort of friendlies leading into the World Cup because we knew it could be an issue. And it, and it turned out it was, and then they played Japan and the next, or they played someone, they played Japan and, and there was a clear knock on from having mm -hmm. a game within four days. Now this is the same problem that Jack Ross has got. You've got a game Wednesday night and then a very important game yeah. three days later on the Saturday. And there is a clear knock on. Um, 
I think he'll look back at the game against Burnley and the knock-on from that and, and try and assess what changes to make. And he might be helped because of injuries. That might yeah. make decisions for him. But I think he'll probably look long and hard about does he freshen it up? Does he go back to the same team? Hmm. It's tricky. I mean, that's what, but that's why yeah, it matters. It that's what you're paying. Yeah, exactly. I, I think um, you know, like you say, with the, with the injury side, that may you know force his hand a little bit to do th to do things. Um, I, you know, personally myself, you know, you look at it. I don't think I would make massive changes. You know, you might tweak it a little bit. I think you might see Debock coming at yeah. that, but yeah. that would be a common sense decision. Yeah. On on the evidence of of, of Bolton. Um, McNulty, is he fit? If he's fit, he plays, I think, because mm -hmm. he was the one player that was showing form yeah. up front. Um, Obviously Willis as well. Willis, he's if he's fit, fit he yeah. plays. Um, you, then you, you know, the question becomes the dynamic in, in the middle. I mean, you, you know, Darren's right, Max Power made a big statement last night mm. to play. Does, does he go in? Who drops out? Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the thing. And it's a job for the manager, isn't it? You know, he, he's got to do that. Um, but again, I don't think he'll, he'll make massive changes. I think he, he may tweak it a little bit um, because I think he, you know I think he believes in what he's doing, uh, you know. And I think you know we've all got to buy into it, and you know we've all got to at some point come to the you know like Sheffield United they come to a bit of a reality check of where we are. But I think obviously fans this year they see this they see last year as our little trial run, you know, in League One, and they see this year as getting out of League One. And I get it, I get where they're coming from, but you know we've just got to be a little bit patient, you know. I think getting. You know, things turned a little bit against Bolton, you know, with the fans and the manager. Only a select amount, you know, not all. Um, I think we've just got, you know, reality checking, you know, let Jack do his job, um, you know, and let's see where the end of the season takes us. Okay, well, um, that's a wrap from us. Thanks for coming on, Nick. Thanks for coming in, Darren. No um, problem. We've got actually a rare week off next week, no <laughs> midweek games, which is no. nice. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we'll make the most of it because there's plenty after that. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the, the last one until Christmas, but yeah, Lincoln next weekend, which yeah. will be an interesting game. They've got a new manager as yeah, well. Yeah, very. We'll be back next week for that one. So thanks, guys, for coming on and no uh, thanks for watching.